Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Michael Ridley. Come see me live at Hyenas Comedy Club in Fort Worth, Texas, August 31st at 10 p.m. Yeah, we're trying to pack this bitch out. Come see your boy. Do a headlining set. I'm probably going to hit a smooth 45. And we got my sweet, my sweet ward here, Taylor Gorman. He's going to be hosting and wrangling the event. Um, guys, please come out. Show some support. Come laugh. Come hang. It's going to be a good time. Again, that's Hyenas Comedy Club in Fort Worth, Texas. August 31st, 10 p.m. Get your tickets now. I appreciate and love every single one of you. Bye-bye. Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Michael Ridley. Today's date is August 14th. It is currently 3.10 p.m. CST in the great town of Austin, Texas. Your boy just got back from his first excursion to New York City. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I am. I was uh, definitely terrified of going to New York City. I don't know. I New York likes to cosplay as this rough and tough place, but like it was uh, pretty clean and everyone was really nice. I was surprised with how clean New York was. I, I thought it was gonna be dirty as fuck. I mean, there's garbage outside, but it gets picked up every day. And I mean, they have sanitation and there's police everywhere, and it, it kind of. I. It felt safe. I was nervous. I, th I thought I thought New York was going to be like this sketch, weird place where it's like, I just thought that I would get roasted for my outfit, or maybe I just wasn't in, maybe I wasn't in the right part, because I was probably one of the best dressed people I would see outside all the time. Everyone just kind of wears like, um, you could tell like, everyone just kind of wears hokas, a lot of hokas, vintage hipster clothes, uh, hokas, and then yeah, some wild shit, crazy shit. I just, I don't know. My perception in New York is, hey, yo, son, why you got your, you? I can see your socks and your, and your pants is cuffed up. Why you cuff the Levi's, though? Hey, my boy, you know it's 2024. You still out here with some cuffed Levi's with the socks showing. Like, because I cuff my Levi's. I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know. It just makes me feel like the pants are complete. Like, you cuff, you cuff the pant leg. It sits nicely on your sneaker. You look, you clean. A little bit of sock showing through to accent the sneaker. Like, come on, bro. Accept the rats. Accept the rats. It's just a free, that's just a free customization of the outfit, you know? The cuffed, the cuffed pant leg. And I always wear a big, like, I'm always wearing an oversized shirt nowadays. I, I love oversized shirts. Like, I just like being in a big baggy shirt. Because, like, I, I, like to, I like to put my hands in the air like I just don't care and I don't want my belly everywhere. You wear it? And uh, I'm, I'm a big, like... I have to be able to raise my arms all the way up, and then the bottom line of the shirt touches my belt line and not an inch higher. I can't be having my hairy little Filipino gut poking out the bottom with my fucking stretch marks. I had three kids with these stretch marks. I'm very self-conscious. I got. I'm very self-conscious of my my stretch marks, bro. I got the. I have the stretch. I have the stretch marks of a 27 year old baby mama. Mother of three. I'm, yeah, I got the I got the mother of three stretch marks, bro. Don't worry, we're, we're, don't worry, bro. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. I'm still I'm, <laughs> I'm still building my temple brick by brick every day. Got to get back in the gym. I haven't been in the gym. I've been wildly depressed, and I'm wondering why. Well, what's wrong with me? I wonder what I wonder what's wrong, <laughs> brother. You need to you need to sweat, <laughs> my brother. You need to you need to exert energy because here's the thing, bro. We have caveman brain. At least I do. And my shit's been going ooga booga booga, but I haven't been moving. Could you imagine putting a caveman in a black one bedroom apartment, just a dark one bedroom apartment, and then give him a little TV and he can watch whatever he wants? Yeah, he'd go crazy. Yeah. That's what that's what we're doing. Give him some snacks. Give him food, yeah, give him food and then a dog that doesn't you know, a uh, dog that doesn't hunt. Give him complex carbohydrates yeah. only. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give a caveman complex carbohydrates. Give him a, give him a bagel with like f three grams of cr cream cheese on that motherfucker. And a bag of ruffles. Yeah, and a bag of ruffles that are also weed edibles. Like, give him the weed <laughs> ruffles. Give a caveman a bag of weed ruffles and put him in a dark room for 14 hours and see what it does to him. That's what I do. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm like in this constant state of like, I don't know, bro. Traveling, I've been traveling a lot this year, and you know, uh, we've been going off the edibles, and it's incredible that we're doing so. But I'm also finding myself like, bro, I'm becoming chemically dependent on the edibles. Like, I know when my body is becoming chemically dependent on shit. I drank for damn near, we're almost at a two year mark of no drinking, but like, I'm just subbing edibles with alcohol, and it's like, I'm becoming a little cranky. 
Like, I'm just like, like, I got back from New York and I just had all this, like, going to New York was so fun and such a chill little vacation and seeing Kill Tony at Madison Square Garden. That was crazy. And it was so cool and so fun. But then I come back home and it's like, I got to call the insurance company. I got to fucking do this. I got to file all this paperwork. I got to, oh my God, I got to, I got to record a podcast. Oh my God, I'm flying to Alabama to go buy this Miata on Friday. Oh my God, what the, oh my God, dude, my wife's sick. Oh fuck, my wife has a cold. Oh, I got to go, I got to go get a CVS and get him medicine. And oh my God, I got to wash my dog. I got I to gotta walk my dog. My dog is filthy. What? My dog has like a thin layer of dog smell. You When you pet my dog, you smell your hand. Oh, it smells like dog. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Stop. Enough. Enough. You haven't had an edible in 12 hours, and now you're fucking, you're fucking, dude, you're fucking spinning the wheel of imaginary shit that you made up in your head. You've spin the wheel of, uh, <laughs> you've, sp come on down, it's America's favorite game show, come spin the wheel of self-imposed deadlines. <laughs> None of this is real. You are just a caveman, and now the world is comfortable, and you don't know what to do with all that ooga booga energy. Come spin the wheel. <clears throat> America's favorite game show, self-imposed deadlines. Only on NBC. <laughs> Come on, Adam. Shoot me in the head, dude. Come on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go to the bank. I gotta make a deposit. I gotta fucking jerk off. Oh, I gotta make time to jerk off. Oh, I haven't jerked. I haven't busted in 24 hours. What the hell's wrong with me? What would the prizes be? <laughs> the self-imposed deadlines. Oh, um, invo <laughs> welcome, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to America's favorite game show. The Spin the wheel of self-imposed deadlines. Today we've got an array of grand prizes behind door number three. Random spurts of diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> A full set of freshly bit nails, and everyone's favorite. <laughs> Everyone's everyone's favorite. Could I bum a cigarette off you? <laughs> Do you have a cigarette? <laughs> you walk through door number three, and someone will give you a loose Newport. <laughs> You're just like <laughs> followed up by everyone's favorite, second favorite prize. Do you also have a lighter? <laughs> Self-imposed deadlines only on NBC. It's just Vanna White presenting. These yeah, things. yeah. She's just she just hands you a, a fucking big. She hands you she hands you one of those lighters with the metals off, and somebody's cranked the flame like a fucking the fucking seventeen inch crack lighter flame and a fucking new a Newport one thousand <laughs> half smoked from the mall ashtray. Super incredible. <laughs> Yeah, those halves. I remember that. We used to do that. We would go to the mall ashtray and just, like, vultures, bro. We just. I remember when we found out that was an option. You're like, wait a minute. There's free cigarettes all over yeah, the what all you, over what town? You, what you talking about? You're telling me, what, you can't find a smokerette? Brother, you go to any loose ashtray outside any shopping mall in this county, you'll find a free pack of cigarettes. I tell you, might take you a day or two. But you'll find you a pack of cigarettes at any of these got dang shopping malls around here. So we, we used to walk for hours, dude. We would walk up and down. Uh, my hometown, uh, it's like a long strip of highway where it's just uh, pharmacies and Blockbuster and Subway and then another pharmacy and a bank and a Blockbuster and then that Subway that's on that side of town, the good Subway, the good Blockbuster. And then you walk down the street a couple of blocks, then there's the bad Blockbuster and there's the bad Subway. You know what I mean? And then there's the bank and then all that. But... In between all those shopping centers, we would just fucking hit a straight mile and just fucking, dude, just cheech half-smoked cigarettes all the way down. Just fucking. Oh, the worst one is, like, when you'd find us a full fucking cig, but it's gotten wet with the with rain. It's got wet with rain, and it mixed with all the ash water, and now it's all dried out. It's so it's just, it's covered in, like, those doo-doo cigarette stains. The cigarette looks like somebody pissed the bed. It's dry aged. <laughs> it's a dry, a dry air aged cigarette. Like the, you know that, you know that loose cigarette you find that looks like somebody pissed the bed sheets at a hotel, and you just, you're, you're 13 years old, you're staring at that fucking cigarette, like, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> you just take a fat, you take that fat, stale nicotine rip, and you fucking kick your feet up, and you don't give a fuck. And then the employees at Dollar General tell you, y'all got to go because y'all definitely ain't old enough to be smoking them things. And you look down, you, you look at you look at it like, am I going to smoke this really? Am I really, am I really about and to then, smoke this? And then hard cut to you and your friends passing it in a blunt circle. Just, hey, hey, bro, 
Come on, come on, dude. Jesus, dude. You check the bus schedule, you're like, it's going to be a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a fucking bus. God, they would they would fix that part of town so much if they, if there was, like, public transit there. But, like, the neighboring city has public transit, but it does not go into that county because that's kind of, like, where all the rich people live. It was just a weird, it was just a weird time. It's a weird place. Or, like, literally, like, 0.5 miles separates Yorktown and Newport News and you <laughs> literally one like 1.5 block over 0.5 mile block of land determines whether your kids get like a somewhat decent education and all the houses over there are more expensive and my parents were able to get us over there I, I only lived there for a f I only got to live there for a few years and then um uh, the fateful day my mom passed away and went right back to Newport News, <laughs> dude. I had a taste of being poor around rich whites. Nice. And then I was just what is considered rich around poor blacks. And then I became a target. I was always a target. It's just a different kind of target, you know. But I was it was still like similar like bullying. It was crazy. It was like it was crazy to get bullied by rich white kids, your mom dies, and now you're getting roasted by black kids on the bus. <laughs> it was like, dude, I like no and then both situations, it's like there are no Asian people there. There's no I was the only Filipino one of the only Filipino people in the school. Meanwhile, there's a town forty five minutes over from where I live, and it's got the densest population of Filipinos in the state. Virginia Beach. Because when I lived in Virginia Beach, dude, they got Filipino bakeries out there. And fucking, dude, you go pull up, get some, get a loafa, get a loafa ube sweet bread. Whew. Bro, I miss that, dude. There ain't no ube in goddamn. There ain't no goddamn. There ain't got no, ain't got no, man, on, man, on goddamn, man, ain't got no goddamn ube in a goddamn Austin, Texas, man. I was like, you so rap, you know, man. Filipino boom hour is crazy. Man on dangle, man on put on the man on man on ain't got no uh no fucking uh ube in a uh, fucking Austin Texas. How you man on put on the man on man on man on man I shut up. Man on man on crazy, <laughs> crazy kacha. Filipino boom how is a crazy character. Hey, now man on put on the man on I am we sit down on sa sa palikita on man put on the man on black boy print. Man on man on man put on the man. <laughs> that's, like, that's like Filipino boom hour. So funny. Black boyfriend. Put that in the mouth. Man, I don't know. Man, I don't know. Ma, ma, buhay na. Nam put that in the mouth. Huh? Nam sa san palikita. Nam bobo animal. Huh? Huh? Man, man. Her boyfriend is black. Man, put that in the mouth. Aye, put that in the mouth. Nam sa san palikita. Nam bobo animal. Yan na si panero pero. The rent is expensive. It keep going up. And then, like, they're just bitching about something. The rent. <laughs> so I feel like I feel like Filipino people would bitch about the rent. <laughs> I live here. Uh, I live here eight years. Rent increase four times every two years. Twenty five percent every two years. When I move in here, seven fifty a month. Eight years later, twenty one hundred. For what? Same problems. My sink. The water. It's not getting hot, huh? I'm paying 2100 I can't have hot water. 2100 in the Philippines, I buy a mansion. I have servant. $2,100 a month, I have servants. <laughs> and a driver. $2,100 a month, you know what that get? Black people upstairs having sex. I can hear it through the wall. <laughs> I can hear it. They're playing the Bobby Brown and the Whitney Houston. <laughs> Every Sunday, they're fucking. They're cleaning. Early in the morning, six in the morning, Bobby Brown. Four in the morning, Bobby Brown. Midnight. T Pain. They're playing midnight. <laughs> T Pain at midnight. Sunday. I have work in the morning. My black neighbors upstairs. Bartender. Boots with the pur. Put on the I cannot get any sleep. I'm getting no sleep. $2,100 a month in rent. Do you imagine working in a working in a, an apartment complex office and you have Filipino tenants? They're just, nice. They're just bitching. There's a guy in my building. He brings his dog to my patio. Big shit. Sus Mario Sep. Ta'i. Maraming nan ta'i. Nan aso. A lot of shit. The dog. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shit. Maramin, maramin nan, maramin nan tai. Just a white lady. Sir, I understand. I understand. 
Charlene, I don't think you understand Charlene's. Char Put on the mo, Charlene's the, the, the <laughs> shit. Charlene's the shit. Yes, yes, Mr. Yes. We understand. We understand, Mr. Cabeza. Joel Cabeza. Yes, it's me, Joel Cabeza. Oh my God. I'm paying my rent on time. Big shit. I I step outside. I have my copy in my hand. I step on my patio. Take a deep breath before I wake up and take my first sip. What do I smell? I smell a big shit. That the guy in my building he has a dog. All day, every day, round the clock. Three times a day, big shit. Never pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, she, she would see him every day, and it would start off nice, like him just like... Oh, hello. Hi. Charlene's. Hello, Charlene's. I'm here to pay my rent. Um, I have cashier's check. $2,100. There you go. Thank you so much. On time, every month. On time, every month. Same time, same place. You know me. Here with $2,100 cashier check from 7-Eleven. I wait in line with $2,100 cash. Bunch of crackhead behind me in line. Very dangerous <laughs> for me. I provide you the money to live here on time, every time. Also, there's a guy. He's shitting all over the place with his dog. His dog is shitting... I, I go outside in my flip-flop, and then I plop my flip-flop in the dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do about that, Charlene? Because I am willing to write email to the property manager. I don't want to go over your head. I don't want to, you know, stepping on the toes. I don't want to be stepping on any anybody's toes. I understand, Mr. Cabeza, and we've made some efforts. We've gotten your emails in the past, and we are actively working on this. Uh, Do you not understand English? <laughs> it sounds like uh, a, a... You're doing a lot of... Do a lot of this, but no actions. Okay? There's Lincoln Log shits. <laughs> Stacking up. Sir, I can assure you that we're working Stacking on... Stacking to the ceiling. I could... If I'm going to bring every dog shit that guy dog make, I'm putting it right here in the no, office no, for please you. Please do not bring shit in the office, sir. Please, we, please. Let's be civil here, sir. Okay. You see this? $2,100 cashier check. Every day, on time, all the time, every time. Every time, on the, on the time. We understand. You're a very good tenant. We, we really appreciate that. Mm. But <laughs> very good tenant. But there's only yes, so I'm much a we can very good tenant. As fast as we can. I understand, but I'm living in shit kingdom. I'm the king of. <laughs> I'm the emperor of the dog shit. I'm gonna make a flag. I'm gonna make a little flag with my face on it, and then I'm gonna right in the shit. Everyone, I'm gonna so get 300. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get 300 flags made on the internet. I'm going to order them. Every shit I see on the property. Quick. Sir, please do not. Quick. Please do not do anything with the. No, with I flag. The dog, I'll flag it dog, all so your guys. No, you no, no, no. I flag it all so your guys they see. Just you see my face. You see the shit. You remember <laughs> the shit that I'm dealing with. <laughs> all right. Bye, Charlene. Have a good day. <laughs> bye. Have a good day. I like your juice. <laughs> Something nice at the end. Oh yeah, of course. Just a Filipino tenant that's fucking just livid. Just mad as fuck. Couldn't pay me enough, dude. I get I there's something that frustrates like they do a lot of outsourcing. Like when you call a uh when you call a when you call a customer service line, I guess corporations I don't know, like but I guess India lost India lost the customer support battle. Cause every time I call customer support it must be cheaper to hire Filipinos because it's always a Filipino person. Be like, uh, brr, 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 brr. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for calling Bet and Body Works <laughs> customer support. My name is Jolene. <laughs> it's always Jolene, too. Man. It is always Jolene, or like, it's like, my name is Selena. I will be helping you at Bed Bath and Body Works customer support. Hello, ma'am, sir. Can I help you? Yeah, and that pisses me off more than an Indian voice because I'm like, God damn, dude, that accent, the Filipino accent is so brutal compared to the – like, it's it's a battle of worst accents, like Filipino accent and Indian accent. They're just, like, the most, like – in English, it's just harder because they pronounce everything. It's so funny how an accent will take, like – they bring their language into 
Like, bro, you're speaking English, but you're speaking Tagalog, or you're speaking you're speaking English, but you're speaking Indian. Like, it, I know, like, you can't take the Indian out of the English, or you can't take the Filipino out of the English, and it's just like, bro, at this point, brother, robots, just give me a super smart AI that can answer the phone and get me to the right department. Just don't even, there shouldn't be any, like, press one or press two, all this insurance shits, but God, dude, imagine giving a caveman a cell phone and being like, Get to the get to a person. We'll let you out of this cage when you figure out how to get to a live person. <laughs> I'm just in there fucking five minutes. I break the phone and I live in there for eternity. Just, just lights off. Just, <laughs> just. I, I feel like if they do when they do get robots and stuff, it'll be the American AI is going to be more expensive. So they're just gonna it's going to be Indian. Who has the, It's going to be Indian programmed AI. It's just a cycle that a never battle ends. of the cheapest AI. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be Indian AI. The cheapest, best, just an Indian guy calling you, and he's like, Hello. <laughs> Thank you for calling today. <laughs> well, let's get started. First, tell me why you're calling. That's actually worse. Yeah. That's like combining two of the worst things. <laughs> Robot. <laughs> in, a short, in a short message, describe why you're calling today. And you try oh to, my and god! You, and you try to go representative, and it, and it stops, and it goes. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go in a short, brief message. Tell me, representative. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> in a short, brief message, representative. Hold on, wait. Let's try again. <laughs> in a short, brief message, tell me why you're calling to. Representative! One second while I connect you to the nearest representative. One second while I connect you to the closest representative. How come yelling representative in public three times gets you to... I I love that. I love watching people try to get across to, like, bro. That is... I love that. You see somebody, like, trying to do something... Like, when you call a customer service line and you're, like, in public on speaker in, like, a coffee shop and it's loud and there's, like, coffee mugs clanging around and you hear a lady fucking frothing up some milk and it's like, (laughs) cling, 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 uh, order for Dan. And you're like, representative! (laughs) I have an order for Dan. (laughs) Representative! (laughs) I want to talk to a person. Hi, what can I get started for you today? I want to talk to a person! (laughs) Caramel ribbon frappuccino for (laughs) Melissa? I want (sighs) to... Thank you so much for this. (laughs) Order for Dan? Representative! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. (laughs) Representative? He gets the caffeine. He immediately can. He immediately is good. Someone from this country. Give me someone who speaks English. Thank you for calling. This is. <laughs> and it's just a real life Indian guy now. Thank you for calling. I um. Thank you for calling. My name is Randy. I uh. In a brief message, could you please uh do I. <laughs> Could you tell me who I have the pleasure of being with today? I'm sorry, uh, is your, uh, are you using a headset? Yes, how could you tell? <laughs> could I have you maybe pull the headset just a little further away from your mouth? and? Yeah, one second. All right, how's that? <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking worse. It just gets, dude. I just don't understand, like. I feel like technology is advancing, but at the same time, shit's getting worse. Or maybe things are getting worse, and they're just convincing us that technology is getting better. Like, like with cars and shit like that. Like everything, everything is like being marketed as advancing, but like low key, shit's getting worse. And I don't think like, I don't think like taking those entry level jobs away from people is how to fix it. Or maybe it is, and I don't know. Fix it. I don't know, dude. I just think like. It's just, it's companies, It this is what it is. Every experience, anytime you're spending money and you're out, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're out, you know, participating and contributing to the economy. Anytime something sucks, 
they have um, it's basically a company or a corporation basically pushing that goalpost until they can find the absolute nightmarish situation that is still functional. Like, oh, why the fuck are we spending 10 cents on every interaction if we can just close that margin a little bit more at the sake of the quality? But let's see what they'll put up with. And as time goes on, I feel like people are more passive and they're more polite and, you know, they're taught to just kind of suck it up and be quiet that, like, services are allowed to fucking suck, like core services. And I think car insurance is one of those things. I think car insurance and car buying it needs a total rework. I think healthcare needs a total rework. I think um, the way we pay service workers needs a rework. Basically, I'm building my political platform. Ridley 2024. I'm going to fucking swing this fucking thing, dude. Fuck Trump. Fuck Kamala. I'm taking it. Nick V All is right. VP. Nick, yep. Nick V will be my VP and my running mate. I'm announcing it now. <laughs> fucking Ridley Vandevoer. 24. <laughs> Ridley Vandevoer 24. That's, guys, that's comment sick. down below. Guys, comment down below if you want the return of the great Nick V. We're going to do another one with him soon. But shout out if you guys remember um, Irish Irishmen Don't Cry. Uh, great episode. If you guys want to go back into the, the backtrack a couple of episodes Kamala, back. Kamala would be up there and he'd be like, I bet it smells crazy up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kamala would be up there and he'd be like, wait. You're telling me a woman's running for president? Pooh! This fucking disgusting! What happens if we go to war? She don't know how to fight, lads! Pooh! Yeah. Ridley 2024. That's legendary. We should just make a bunch of, like, political merch. I was going to say what you're talking about. The DMV is the best example of DMV that. is the best example because now... You can't even fucking go to the DMV. You can't even go to the DMV and wait anymore. My experience with the Austin DMV was like, uh, so they have these, uh, you set an appointment, right? But guess what? <laughs> All the appointments are fucking full. Oh, fuck. Oh, the appointment, the calendar's so fucking full. Uh, there's no room. I couldn't fit another person in here. <laughs> it's so full. You're going to have to wait. Six to eight months, you'll have a fucking woman have a full child to term before you get to the DMV. <laughs> you'll have a son. You'll you'll be holding your newborn son before you get a a Tex Austin Texas DMV appointment, dude. You'll be in the third trimester before you even get to step foot in the DMV, dude. You'll have the baby shower. And you'll be at the fucking. You'll be opening baby. You'll be <laughs> you'll be going oh with a onesie by the time and you'll get a phone call and it's like oh we can take we can have you at the DMV today and you're like you drop everything you you leave those formative moments of your you know child's life to go to the dmv your that's how crying. serious it is your wife's like john please don't leave and you're like i gotta go i gotta update my goddamn fucking the address is wrong on my fucking <laughs> id i gotta update my id so i derail my entire life for something that should take five fucking minutes and then once you get there and then once you get there it's just you're Thank you for coming to the DMV. Have a <laughs> Just have a seat. Uh, we'll be with you shortly. There's Indian people at the DMV now. You're like, oh. And then you get to the counter. Can I ask? <laughs> you get to the counter and you have uh, the lady with a... <laughs> you get to the counter of the DMV and the lady, uh, is uh, the black lady behind the counter has nails that are so long that she mistypes the VIN on your shit and then you get an SR-22 in the mail and they threaten to come tow your car and fucking... <laughs> Uh, revoke your license and shit because this bitch is uh, prioritizing form over function <laughs> as far as her typing abilities go. She looks at you and you sit down. I misspelt like for I misspelt most of your information, but God damn, Mr. Chan went crazy on my shit. <laughs> Mr. Tran went crazy on my nails, dude. It's like, yeah, lady, you you mistyped my DMV and they fucking towed my shit. They towed my car, and now I have to go deal with the tow truck guy. And he's like, well, best we can do is about $1,200 if you want to get it off the lot. Bing! <laughs> <laughs> and then you go and swipe your card, and your fucking card declines. And now it's locked up because it's never seen you at this tow truck place before. And then you get on the phone with your bank, and it's like, thank you for calling your bank. And it's just, it's just a fucking nightmare, and you should have never been here in the first place. All you had to do was update your fucking ID and fucking uh, register a car and title a car in your name, and now it's you're just this, it, you're just on these it just they send you down these horrible 
time-wasting rabbit holes. And I feel like if if we're in the fucking future, this shit should take 15 minutes tops. I'm all about... So what my political platform is, I just want to optimize America on on every single in every single facet of our economy, every single facet of our infrastructure and society. I want to optimize that. You know, if we're using AI to why are we using technology for all this evil shit when we could literally just be fast tracking and fixing everything? All kids can be every kid can learn from home. Every kid has a, uh, you know, Let's let's put every kid at home and we can or we'll put them in a building with computers and then we give them a break from the computers and they socialize and whatever, dude. And you can stay in school as long as you want. You can stay in school as long as you want. You could be 35 in the fifth fucking grade. It's all up to you to manually progress in the computer and learn and teach yourself and socialize at the same time. And then the people that can't get past that part. Guess what? Now. Those are all your potential, like, mentally ill and homeless people. They get sent to a place where they will be promptly put down. No, they will be taken care of mentally. They'll, they'll, they'll all get taken care of, and those people get taken care of. And then everyone who else advances through, mind you, we've been doing the computer school and classes, and we've been finding out what your aptitudes and your strengths and basically what cast you'll be set in. And it's like, oh, man, I fucking... You know, I'm working on the computer, but, like, I'm doing all my computer classes, but you can see most of my time I spent in the shop, and I was working, you know, and this is where you find your manual, you know, hand, your manual workers. You find your people who, who work with their hands and their mind in tandem, and then you can find your brainiacs that just can fucking sit and stoic and just crank all day. Those are your coders, your fucking, you know what I mean, your spreadsheet guys. You're, you find all those people, and then you, you sort them in proper, we're just not optimized. We have so much lag, we have so much delay, we have so much energy just going in the wrong places. That's something I learned about New York City is, like, people like to shit on New York, but I'm walking around, and it's pretty optimized for how much of a nightmare it is, like, from the subway to the airport. Did you take the train? Uh, yeah, I took the train. I, it, it, everybody just kind of fucking is just, let's go. And I'm like, I thought I would hate New York. I'm like, dude, I've been a New Yorker my whole life. I've been a, what the fuck is going on? I like it there. What the fuck is happening? Why is this taking so long? Please move over to the right and let everyone walk past you. Standing traffic to the right. Walking traffic to the left. Welcome to the Atlanta airport. <laughs> it's going to take you 74 minutes to get to your gate and your, and your flight boards in 10. Why the fuck is that even a thing? Why do I have to battle hordes of fentanyl? zombies at the airport just to get to my connecting flight optimization if we cannot let ai take over we need it to optimize we don't need to put ai in robots we don't need ai to you know be able to touch we don't need ai to be able to leave the computer and exert itself physically ai is fine as long as we keep it digital don't make it a physical thing don't make robots don't connect it to your fucking appliances. Everyone has seen what happens when AI gets a hold of appliances and you got a you got a fucking Roomba with a knife duct tape to it and it's chasing you around your house. We don't need none of that. We just need perfect fucking synchro synchronicity. We need we just need optimization from the bottom up. And then that'll fix most of the problems and that'll fix most of the economy. Is if we just it's a long list of shit. But if we just keep ignoring it, which is what human society has done for, we've done that forever. We just, the West has just, we'll just ignore it, we'll fix it later. And then you do that enough times and you have all these environmental disasters and you have all the, you know what I mean? And it's like, we'll get to it, we'll get to it when we can. Well, it's like, dude, there's so many moving pieces and so much of it is disorganized and there's so much chaos happening. You can at least try to optimize it. Ridley 24. <coughs> no more delayed flights. Ridley 2024. <laughs> Dude, that's camping. Yeah, I feel like you should. I feel like fucking uh, it, everything. The airport needs to get reworked. All this shit needs to get reworked. It's just a fucking. It's just a nightmare, dude. Well, you should tell us more about what uh, what happened in New York. What you saw in New York. Whatever you can talk about. Um, so it was pretty cool. We uh, you know, I saw Kill Tony and all that stuff, and that fun. That stuff was fun. But then I had some time to kind of like, I had some time to kind of like be myself and. Uh, be a tourist and look at stuff like I've never been on top of a skyscraper that's super high up I've never been like I've never been you know um that high up or like in a city a sprawling city full of buildings I'll tell you right now Austin is tiny 
compared to New York. Compared I mean, New York, New York is York insane. New York is Everywhere insane. Everywhere is tiny. I, I looked up when they started building New York 1600s. Bro, 1600s. How many fucking years is that? I'm, uh, I'm airdropping you a video of this view that I had. And um, it just blows my mind. 1600. So it's 2024 minus 1600. 424 years. New York has existed longer than America. New York is one of the oldest. I mean, it's one of the original 13 colonies. But, like, they were immediately like, yo, let's start making something. Let's start, let's start building a town. And then the town became a city. And then the city became a neighborhood of many neighborhoods that make this giant city. And it's so, like, it's, like, the perfect example of, like, industrialism meets industrialism meets optimization, in my opinion. And, I, I mean, it was just a brief, like, compared to Austin. Austin is so janky and everything's, like, a misstep. Everything is, like... Like the freeways and the infrastructure, everything is just, it's, you can tell when you're in a town that grew too fast, then there's a lot of reactive infrastructure. And then by by the time, yeah, same thing with Portland. It's like this reactive infrastructure that, guess what? You guys are building all these tunnels and bridges and shit now, or you guys are building all these freeways and stuff now, but by the time it's finished, guess what? The population has increased and that has now made those updates obsolete because it took so long. That's happening in Virginia. There, Dude, there's two tunnels to get to the other side of where I'm from. And it's been that way for the last 30 years. And now they're building two more tunnels, three more tunnels. And it's like, buddy, by the time those two or three more and we have five are done, we're going to need ten fucking tunnels. Yeah. It's incredibly. It's fucked. Could you imagine if I-35 was two lanes? Yeah, that's what Portland is. That's what yeah. 84 is. Yeah, Portland and Hampton Roads are very similar in that sense of there's too many fucking people here and the town wasn't designed for it. And and all, and, and, and in New York, at least it's like bus, taxi, subway, fucking airports, fucking helicopter rides, fucking Ubers, fucking scooters, fucking there's just everything, dude. Uber, 30 seconds. I was like, oh, shit, the Uber kept catching me off guard. But let us I want to break down this view, dude. i This was incredible to me. Like, I was just, oh, like that, hit pause. Like, get just, just get like a span of the, of the city. Like, right, yeah, like right there. Just anything. Bro, I was so high. Like. Physically and mentally. Physically and mentally Hi, I was so stoned when we were on top of this building. And, uh, bro, like, at, at random, like, I'll watch this video, I'll hit pause, I'll zoom in, and the iPhone zoom is crazy. I just see, like, a whole different story. It's like I spy, mm-hmm. where I could just zo- pause the video at any moment and zoom in anywhere on the street. And it's just like, bro, I can just see anything. There's, like, a new story every time. And that's the whole city the entire time, just sprawling, interweaving synchronicity you're, you're everyone's right. doing what the fuck they're supposed to be doing motherfuckers are going to work motherfuckers lining up and the bikes they all have these e-bikes there's a spot i left every day i left my hotel it was like six fucking african dudes and they were on e-bikes and they're all got their phone out waiting for a fucking DoorDash. and that's like their meetup spot and then the fucking there's like another african guy and he's like the mobile mechanic for these e-bikes and i'm like yo that's incredible mm-hmm. that these guys just kind of fucking sync up and they fucking do shit like yeah and this this view is 72 stories up that's how high up the edge is yeah and uh i remember that from when i went there and it, a lot of these buildings are like over 120 stories like there's insanely high and, buildings and, and they're old there's a lot of old buildings some of those yeah. buildings have been around 25 50 75 years old 100 year old buildings and they just they're still there and it started they all start they started doing this fucking 400 years ago and when you look at all this you're like holy fucking shit that can be accomplished in 400 years without the technology that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and recent technologies of what the last 30 imagine what the next 400 years is going to look like with said are we going to make it as a society that far do are we going to nuke ourselves before we even get to that part like i grew up as a kid thinking that you know we'd be like jetsons like fucking everything's fuck that was a horrible sound effect but everything's you know optimized and everything's on track and 
fucking teleporters and shit like that. We we brother, I have no idea what it's going to be like when me and Taylor and our wives are are going to be like 90 years old. I can't even fathom what that world will be. What year? What year were the Jetsons, yeah, living in? It's like, it's, yeah, 2062. And no bullshit, that probably will happen by 2060. Like, no bullshit. Like, we'll be there and we'll be like, holy fuck, AI will be in full swing. Home assistants. Yeah. Uh, it actually doesn't seem that far off now. It did, like, a, like 10 years ago. That, that seemed like a stretch. Yeah, but, like, 24, 2062. 2062 minus 2024. That's 38 years, bro. 38 years plus 31. I'll be 69 years old. I'll be 69 years old in 2062. Noise. Noise, <laughs> dude. dude. Yeah, but that like that that blows my fucking mind Maybe that that's 69ing even a... with robots. <laughs> be getting jorked by my cybernetic princess. <laughs> And then I'm like, honey, I roll over. I, I get done fucking my cybernetic robot, and I roll over, and I was like, baby, how was that? It was so good. I really <laughs> applaud. Oh, my God, dude, you fuck my butt. You are fucking the shit out of me. Oh, my God. You did such a good job, man. I swear to God, you straight up stretched my cybernetic bussy out. Oh, my God, brother. Good love you. Good night. Just in <laughs> still, like, we're still, it's 2062, and yeah, fucking... Yeah, <laughs> Just outsourcing your robot girlfriend's personality to Indian dudes in a call center. <laughs> That's so funny to me. Goodness gracious. Can we go back to that video? Because another high thought that I had while I was up there was like, bro, you can see you can see the Brooklyn Bridge kind of like to the left. Like when it pans to the left, there's the Brooklyn Bridge and all that shit. You can see all that. That's not it, but it's over there. Uh, somewhere around there. It's right here, I think. Uh, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. I can't remember where I was, but like, um, zoom out to the yeah. Like, look how crazy that is. Like how, cause then even when you're that zoomed in, I can zoom into that freeway back there. There's like a or like that road back there. You could just zoom in anywhere. And I was so high, like, bro, I have a whole, I have like a whole like God mode view of New York from up here. And I'm zooming in high, and I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Look at that. Whoa, there's – I can see a guy on the curb right there. Hit pause, zoom, zoom, zoom. And I just see these little these little marionettes, these little shadowed marionettes of people. And then I see cabs and stuff, and they're just all moving, and I'm just high as fuck. Like, bro, how did we do this? This is – in a sense, it's like from from like my dream world is like – the cities are like this like there's these sprawling futuristic cities and then you know you can fuck off and go into nature and the nature is all preserved because we figured out a way to create um we have an in industry without pollution and we we're using clean energy and there's there's nuclear power deep underground that's powering every city and there, there's no electrical we, there's never there's never a, a rolling blackout with every the lights are always on because we've created these nuclear cells that are so deep underground with these thick ass concrete. And even if, you know, nuclear shit goes off or because of like an earthquake, it's so down below that it, it fucking gets absorbed by the fucking Earth's core. We've we've learned how to harness geothermal energy in a way that. And we have robots that do everything and AI controls most of, you know, whatever, you know, all the optimization is now being fed through this AI algorithm. And um, people are the fittest they've ever been. They're the most intelligent they've ever been. They're the sexiest they've ever been. <laughs> Everybody has like a place in, in, in art and music and creativity is through the roof. And we just live in this harmonious world where we go... Yeah, that's cool that AI made that. But, like, we value what humans have made. You know what I mean? Like, human art, because, like, in comparison to our technology, we're so primitive. So it's like, oh, my God, look what he made. Holy shit, a human made that. That's that's human made. Like, oh, people are going to prioritize, like, handmade, human made items that weren't, you know what I mean? Like, there, there will be rarity. Like, there will be, uh, like, people will be more grateful for it, you know? And then I was just high as fuck up here thinking, like, yo, how long would it take Spider-Man to get to Brooklyn? <laughs> and um, then I'm also on the same, on the other side of the coin, I'm like, yo, how long would it take for Spider-Man to get to Brooklyn from here? I'm thinking maybe, like, 10 or 12.
12 minutes, tops. 10 or 12 minutes tops. So if you think about it, dude, I'm watching the movie and in relative speed, the speed relative to what I've seen in the movie and what I'm seeing in these buildings, dude, he's going at least a buck 20. He's swinging at a buck 20, especially if he does this number, if he goes like this and he goes. The slingshot. Dude, that's 180 off rip. Like, I can't even imagine the G-forces of just... <laughs> just the fucking... <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> like, that's incredible to me. Yeah. Like, bro, Spider-Man is OP uh -huh. in New York. <laughs> Spider-Man in a desert, you're fucked. <laughs> like, if it was me up there on edibles, the first thing I would have thought when I was zooming into stuff would have been like, cops can totally see me jorking from space. Yeah. If I can see all this yeah, shit. Yeah, if I can see all this shit with my iPhone, somebody can fucking see me. Uh, imagine being like a rich tech bro and you're just in your office with like uh, on the hundredth floor of your luxury uh luxury condo building and you have one of those walls the, the one of the walls in your condo is just all the mirror all the windows. And you're like this super like triple monitor setup like in the chair like the 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 computer setup from Grandma's boy that homeboy had. Ew 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 that shit. Yeah. But like <laughs> And the cops zoom in on you, and you're just VR headset with the auto auto blow V2 on your shit. Just whoops, whoops. You're just getting digitally jorked, and <laughs> and they can zoom in on that via satellite. <laughs> just catch you with your pants around your ankles digitally. Boys plugged into the Matrix, and the CIA's laughing at you. <laughs> Fucking FBI's laughing at your ass. Incredible. I thought his dick would be bigger. Yeah, this dude's. <laughs> I know this is I know this is an 18 inch screen, but I mean relative to the size of the screen, the motherfucker is not. He's not putting up pixels at all. No, you're not putting up any pixels on that picker. I tell you what. <laughs> um, okay, for the let's put a ribbon on this with some fan mail. We got another fan mail from Clayman from our buddy Ben Melson, dude. Melson, Melson, mail call from my boy Melson. This one's for you, dig diggity doggity, diggity doggity. Let's read some mail. Let's read some fan measy. Hey, Michael. Loving the newest episodes of the pod. Exclamation points are appreciated. Here's some questions for you and Taylor. Most surprising answer from the last questions I sent you about the sexual sandwich. Yeah, we were talking about sandwiches and shit. And then, uh, da, 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 da. why are there, uh, I don't know, dude. It was just a riff. Why are there cinder blocks in my bedroom? I don't know. I honestly don't remember. It was a riff. We've done so much shit since then. I love you. Thank you so much for watching, brother. What is your favorite viral video? This is an easy one. All right, Taylor, I want you to go to YouTube. We're going to answer this question right now. Go to YouTube and type in uh, type in Rocky. I know you type in uh, type in I know you like wieners. This is this is this gets me every play that shit. Don't give me that shit. Wiener. Oh, you gotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Here you go, Rocky. I know how much you like wieners. <laughs> Homophobic chihuahua. One more time. Here you go, Rocky. I know how much you like wieners. <laughs> Here you go, Rocky. I know how much you like wieners. The little snarl at the end is just crazy. He's like, the fuck you said it. Here you go, Rocky. I know how much you like wieners. He stops mid bite. Like any dog. Any normal dog would be fucking chewing on that hot dog. But that dog picked up on that he was clowning him. Like, it's crazy how intuitive dogs are. He's like, bro, are you clowning me right now? Are you calling me gay? Here <laughs> you go, Rocky. I know how much you like wieners. <laughs> <laughs> that look, bro. Dogs are crazy. Dogs are so intuitive. They know you're clowning their ass, bro. They know. They know that. Yo, dude was like, are you fucking trying to play me right now? You got your what, phone out and shit? You got your phone out? Yeah, like, my dog knows, the like, when I... are gonna see this. Yeah, my dog knows, like, when I take pictures of him, he... When I'm about to take a picture of him, I literally, uh... uh he literally, like, his energy changes, dude. His energy changes. Can I show you some pictures of Marvel, Taylor? Mm -hmm. Speaking of dogs, I want to show the viewers my dog. I took some crazy pics of my dog. You saw the dog if you were on the Patreon. You saw yeah, him. if you guys saw... If, yeah, if you guys uh, joined the Patreon, you see my dog. Co-host. My dog second. rules, man fucking sending all these pics to taylor look at this dog man guys look at my dog he's so fucking chill look how chill he is dude he's i washed him i washed the shit out of him click that other one this one is this one's funny dude i washed my dog 
He needed a bath. It's been like a month. I only got one for some reason. I trimmed all his nails. I brushed his teeth. I combed his fur. I shaved his paws. Bro. <laughs> that's such a funny picture, dude. Dude, he was dude, that's after his bath, bro. He was um sweepy. Yeah, Marvel gets worn out after a bath. It's crazy, bro. When I wash my dog, I wash my dog. Like I don't bullshit with the dog washing. I I trim the nails, all that. It's a day spa. Yeah, yeah. He's getting he's getting uh, you know, he's getting the best treatment or whatever. Hold on, let me uh boom this over here. My man was chilling hard, cuz look at this. Open that one. This is incredible. Look at him, dude. He's just He's hitting this one, dude. He's But yeah, I cleaned him up. But yeah, I don't know. That's my favorite viral video so far. Let's go back. I know you like gweeners. If you're opening your own themed restaurant, what is it and what do you serve? Uh Lumpia. Lumpia King. There's a restaurant in uh there's a restaurant in Virginia named Lumpia King, bro. And it's just, I would open a Filipino restaurant. I open like a Filipino, I would open like a Filipino Texas barbecue fusion restaurant where we take like classic Filipino dishes and we add like, you know, we're going to have traditional Filipino food there too, but you're also going to have like the white people menu. And that's all the stuff is like, oh my God, brisket Lumpia would be fire. Mm -hmm. I think brisket Lumpia, don't steal this fucking idea, by the way. I know. I'll, be, I'll open Instagram next week and <laughs> reels. A hot new Filipino Texas barbecue fusions just opened up on ETH six, and you're just like, that was that was me. Yeah, that was my idea. Yeah, it's just one of those, just an Asian barbecue fusion thing. It's worked before. I've seen it work, and um, I like that. If I opened my own restaurant, it'd be like a, be like Texas Roadhouse meets Filipino restaurant experience. Like I would want it to be a chain or like you know the bakery. In it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each location has instead of like the uh, Cracker Barrel. Instead of the Cracker Barrel uh, gift shop, it's just the front is a Filipino bakery, and then you can go in the back and sit down and actually, like, and then that's where all the crazy-ass shit is. Yeah. And then um, fucking uh, banana cream ube pudding. Mm. Oh. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Ube. Classic banana pudding, but ube. That's, yeah. Bana I, I think we should stop. I think all right, I think we should stop talking about this because now Sorry, I'm just. Ben, we answered your question. Moving yep, on. Yep, there you go, buddy. Yep, we figured it out. Just yeah, just the dankest Filipino barbecue restaurant you've ever experienced is what I would open. Taylor, and, uh, cut that out. All right, Taylor, cut. Yeah, please cut that part out. That's confidential. Go to the Patreon. I'll give, go into more details about that restaurant. No, we won't. <laughs> yeah, we aren't. There's so many people. So many people would fuck it, dude. There's no Filipino food in Austin. It would be horrible if somebody did that. You'd there, probably make no money if you opened a Filipino restaurant in Austin. There's people with pens and paper right now. <laughs> <It's fucking laughs> the CIA. Um, what are some of your favorite video games? Are you playing anything currently? Anything you're coming out you're excited about? There are some video games I'm very excited about. Thank you for asking. That's a great question, Mels. First off, um, I want to buy a DDR pad from Russia for $200. There's these full metal DDR pads you can get for about $200, and I want that in my house. I want to play DDR with the bar and everything, just in that bitch. You'd be so ripped. Oh, dude, I, my legs would be crazy. And I would wear, like, uh, I'd wear, I'd play DDR with one of those uh, uh, weight vests on it. I'd just put, I'd just strap 50 pounds to my chest and fucking Your cardio dance, would be dance nuts. all night away. Dance, dance, you're my shooting star. Dance, dance, dance. That's every DDR song, by the way. It's just dance, dance. You're my shooting star. You're my only dream. You're everything. <laughs> and I'm just, hey, babe. Yo, what yeah, just uh, cranking out some songs on DDR. You're my fucking shooting star. You're my only dream. It's poorly uh, translated Eurobeat songs. <laughs> Yo, why does Ridley look like David Goggins right now? <laughs> hey, yeah, who's gonna? What is it? What is who's David gonna carry the boat? Who's gonna? Yeah, yeah. Who's gonna hit the steps? <laughs> who's gonna dance to this shitty European music? Who's gonna sweat? <laughs> who's gonna sweat in the living room while their wife works from home? Don't worry about that. <laughs> Type shit. <laughs> um. A lot of remakes that I want to play. A lot of childhood remakes. Snake Eater, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater remake on my list. Uh, Dead Rising. They made they they're remastering Dead Rising, and that's the zombie game in the mall that came out for 360 in uh, like 2006, and that was my shit, dog. Nice. And that uh, there's I had a lot of gripes about that game. It was vert. There were like some playability and um, quality of life issues that I had with the original. And I watched the trailer, and they're updating the graphics fully, 
remastering the graphics fully. They're, you know, adding, um, they're making, the game is super fucking hard. You have to find people in this mall and you escort them to a safe room. But the AI of those NPCs that you have to save sucks so bad. And they're like, yeah, we've updated the game with better AI and the, the NPCs will follow you and they'll be e easier to organize. And uh, like saving these people from the zombies in the mall gives you uh, a high score. Like it helps you, you get EXP and makes your guy stronger. And it's so fucking difficult to do so, and they're, they die so fucking easy. And when you have 8 to 12 of these NPCs that you're all saving at once, you'll lose like 2 or 3 just to their sheer retard retardation. You go to one part of the mall, you go to the next part, you had 12 dudes with you, you go to the next part, oh, you didn't wait for all of them to, you didn't wait for all of them to queue up with you before you went to the next sector. You left 3 behind. Now you have to go back and save these 3. Guess what? Those 8 or whatever... They're still in the other sector, and you can see their health dying. So now you're just like, fuck, I guess some of y'all have to die. I can't save you all. And they make it really hard to get guns. It's like the first half of the game is melee-based, and then yeah. the second half you start to get, get guns, guns. And it's fun kind of how exciting it is once you get them. I remember that. Yeah, I remember getting, like, I remember, like, uh, when every time I would leave the safe house in Dead Rising, I would get a, a katana and an Uzi off rip every time. Katana, Uzi, coffee creamer, orange juice. All right, I'm ready to go. Because the Katana is crazy. Mm -hmm. It's so, the Katana in Dead Rising is so OP. You can just, you lunge like six feet with every slice and you can take out like two or three zombies per slice. But yeah, they added a health bar to all your melee items so you can organize and not accidentally destroy an item if That'll you're trying fun. to save it. Yeah, I think. With updated graphics and updated AI and better saving and autosave features, stuff like that, quality of life shit, that's going to be a good fucking game. Right now, I'm playing Overwatch. I haven't really been playing. It's been like two weeks since I've picked up the sticks, but I am nasty at Overwatch, and I play tank and damage. My mains are Orisa and Reinhardt for tank and uh, Junkrat and Torbjorn right now for damage. Those are the guys, Those are my heroes that I like to bang with. What else? Um Anything else that I'm anything else? Uh, yeah, gonna... there's two more, and then we can wrap. We got to wrap this up. All right. And Ridley, and Taylor, Ridley and Taylor have been uh, invited to appear on Shark Tank Two in two weeks. What do you invent to present on the show? Uh, self cleaning flashlight. And then uh, you have a time machine. Where do you go, and what do you do? Um, I have a time machine. I go back to 1993. I watch myself get born. I watch my formative years, and I watch my parents. Um, raising me and it's just me my mom and my dad in their starter apartment in the 90s in northern virginia and i i, I would just like to watch that from afar i would uh i wouldn't go back and change anything i would just go back in time and i would watch you know me and my mom as you know little baby michael walking and then my mom like oh keeping me you know standing up tall and whatever make sure i don't fall uh, I would just go back and I would just kind of be like a guy with a newspaper, like watching her raise me and try to relive what that was like through that. If I had a time machine, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything. I would not risk butterfly affecting that shit because I would just go I'd, for me, like personally, like for me, that's what I would do with it. Because then I know I'm not damaging any history. I'm not fucking up anyone's timelines. I'm just... You're being just seeing very, a beautiful thing. I'm just kind of, yeah, just go back and watch, you know, my mom and see my mom. Fuck yeah. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. I'm about to cry. Yeah, um, you, if you guys want Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben, you, you fucking, fucking idiot. Now I'm about to fucking cry. Because I, I read this email like a week ago, and I've been thinking about it. And cry on about the podcast, Ben. What the hell? <laughs> I will cry on the Patreon, guys. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Radio Ridley Radio. I'm going to take a pee break, and then we're going to head over to the Patreon. Guys, again, remember, uh, just a little reminder, come see your boy live in uh, Hyenas, Fort Worth, Texas, August 31st, August, August 31st at uh, 10 p.m. Please, please, please uh, buy some tickets. Tickets it, are in the description, guys. Tickets are in the description. Buy tickets so we can do more road shows and come see you guys. Yeah, please, please, please. And, um... Uh, we're going to start a mailing list and all that stuff soon so we can start planning our route and figuring out, you know. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching Radio Ridley Radio. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Please subscribe. Please like. It helps us out so much here. If you don't want to sub to the Patreon, at the bare minimum, just take that little finger of yours and click subscribe or take that little finger of yours and hit like or leave a comment. All that stuff helps out a lot. It really does help out the channel, dude. 
It really does. All that stuff helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if um, if you like me, you're going to want to see me succeed. It's the easiest way to support without, you know, spending any of your hard-earned money. But for those of you that do spend your hard-earned money, this episode of Radio Ridley Radio continues on Patreon. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.